So, uh, Dr. Gordon Glare, thank you very much for joining us today for this quick discussion. Uh, I wanted to start by asking you, what exactly is the role of the World Health Organization in shaping uh, global health? And how does the role of WHO relate or compare to the role of government, non-government and, and other sectors? I'd like to answer uh, that from the point of view of uh, our role in non-communicable diseases, which is where I've been working most of my career. Um, WHO has three uh, levels, the global, regional, um, where we are located in uh, Copenhagen covering 53 European uh, countries. There are five other regional offices and then numerous country offices um, that have a direct national uh, response. Within uh, the non-communicable disease arena, WHO has been empowered to take the leadership in a number of areas. Um, these over the past uh, two years since the UN General Assembly adopted the declaration has translated into setting a global agenda um, with a global action plan, uh, setting a monitoring framework, identifying what are the targets and what are the indicators that countries should be working to, and then delivering that um, through co in collaboration with other UN agencies and other sectors and current discussions are about how to bring the UN agencies together such that UNDP and UNICEF, UNFPA and other arms of the UN family are coordinated with WHO. So that's what happens at the global level. Regionally, we translate uh, those global policies um, into actionable programs that are targeted. What we can do in Europe uh, is different than what can be done in uh, Southeast Asia, for example. And indeed, in Europe, what one would do with the European Union um, it may be different than what one would do in the uh, Commonwealth of Independent States. Um, so there is a, a lot of nuancing that has to be done at the regional level. At country level, then much more focused work where integrated programs and technical support is given to countries in planning, in monitoring, in evaluating uh, their public health programs. So we've, we've heard a lot about a health in all policies approach. Um, what exactly is this and why is it important for NCDs in particular? So what's health in all policies? There are many terms uh, around uh, that uh, are used uh, to some extent interchangeably. Um, health in all policies, whole of government approach, whole of society. Intersectoral action has been around uh, for the last 30 years um, and health in all policies in particular was introduced as a term in public health by the uh, Finnish presidency of the European Union um, which promoted it as the theme of its own uh, presidency. Since then um, it has uh, gained uh, global uh, adoption and, and interest. Uh, a slogan way of saying it is uh, to say every minister is a health minister. Um, uh, the trade decisions that are taken, agreements between countries on what they buy and sell to each other, foreign direct investment, the levels of employment, types of employment, the access to safe and decent jobs, levels of education, uh, income redistribution or otherwise. Um, each of these are decided and defined by sectors other than health. And within non-communicable disease where, for example, the price of tobacco is a major determinant of how much cigarettes are bought and smoked, where the price of alcohol does the same, where how food is marketed to children um, is, uh, is a determinant of their own risk of becoming overweight or obese, where the types of food that are produced by the agriculture system um, determine uh, the reach of local produce and how much people can afford fresh vegetables and fruit versus processed uh, food. All uh, these are just a few of the large range of uh, policy contexts within which people uh, have to take their choices for everyday life. So to some extent the claim is made that people are responsible for their own choices and at the final level this must be true. Um, no one can force me to put a cigarette in my mouth uh, but fundamentally uh, the policy context in which I live uh, makes healthy choices easier or more difficult. 
And then comes the importance of health in all policies. Every time a road is built, every time a trade agreement is signed, every time uh, some consideration is given to a labor policy, um, these are known to have an impact on health and they should be regarded uh, as and valued as such. And, and, uh, and that is the, the main thrust behind uh, the advocacy for health in all policies. So Gordon, many NGOs and policy groups are calling for an integrated response to NCDs with an overarching goal of health for all. What does this, what does this mean to you? Can you explain this to us? What's the role of an integrated approach? In uh, public health in general and in non-communicable diseases in particular, uh, it's, it's interesting as one looks at the history of uh, global health policy making, one sees uh, this constant struggle between the horizontal and the vertical, the thematic, the single disease um, versus the, uh, the more integrated health systems uh, based approaches. They have a, it is very clear that they both have a, a space, they both are needed. Um, it is quite clear when, within the area of chronic disease that there are a group, especially in the four main diseases which, where we are talking about cardiovascular, uh, diabetes, cancer, and chronic uh, respiratory diseases, there are a group of risk factors that are held in common, tobacco, alcohol, uh, diet, and physical activity. It is very clear that there is a lot of common prevention that one can do. And indeed, um, with the chronicity of these conditions, there is a lot that can be done by the health system to provide integrated care. Um, the benefits of diabetes, uh, glucose control uh, in, in persons with diabetes, the public health benefits are not accrued unless one is also controlling the blood pressure. To give a very trivial example, but telling, you can't have a hypertension clinic at one end and a diabetes clinic at the other. So there are uh, many levels of possible coordination or integration, coordination of prevention, coordination of health services, that is very important. It is also equally important that at certain points in time, it is uh, very relevant to have focused action on specific conditions. Uh, for example, we are um, having this interview just a day after uh, a decision has been taken to approve the Tobacco Products Directive um, in, uh, in, in Europe, so the, in the European Union. This uh, decision would not have been possible given the amount of opposition, lobbying and even hackling uh, by the tobacco industry. This would not have been possible unless there had been a very concerted effort um, by public health agencies, civil society, um, in order to address uh, and advocate for public health. Um, and this sort of mix of occasional vertical and general horizontal um, uh, approaches are what I prefer uh, in, in a public health approach. What about integration of NCDs with the so-called unfinished agenda, that is maternal child health, uh, communicable diseases? Do you see that there's a role for an integrated approach? Absolutely, absolutely. I think uh, one of my favourite sayings is that uh, uh, pathogens don't know the boundaries of organizations. Um, if one looks at, uh, for example, tuberculosis, uh, a major issue uh, even in many countries in Europe, um, tuberculosis in the high burden countries is to a great extent attributable to the amount of tobacco, uh, poor nutrition uh, and alcohol, um, quite alongside other more well-known uh, associations with HIV, for example. And Mycobacterium was never told that non-communicable diseases um, uh, are handled by one part of an organization and, and HIV and, uh, and TB are handled by another. The, these, these conditions of vulnerability and, and uh, complex risk play together in society and they need to be addressed together. Another reason um, for moving forward